Yeah, this idea of the spammy behavior. I think that's, that's as Sam, it's a fight we're going to be fighting for, you know, for forever. Just because I think people are, are people are used to thinking of social as if I throw it up against the wall, I'm going to wake up and see a bunch of sales. Hey there, and welcome into the Direct Selling Accelerator podcast. My name is Sam Hind, and today I am joined by a very special guest and very special friend to the Oxano team. Today, we're going to be chatting with the amazing Scott Kramer. Scott Kramer is chief brain behind Multibrain, and you would have seen us chatting with him uh, over the course of the last two years in lots of different scenarios. Scott and I have shared the stage at the Direct Selling Association Conference in the USA uh, twice now. We have presented together at Social Media Day. Scott's incredible team at Multibrain also puts on and runs Social Media Day for the Direct Selling Association amongst many other things. The reason I'm pulling this incredible individual in today is because I wanted to have a candid chat with somebody else who specializes in social media for the direct selling industry about what has happened across 2023 and what's coming for 2024. Now, I know Scott can be brutally honest. I know he's not here to agree with me. I know he's going to tell you exactly what he thinks about what's happening. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about what we see happening, what we see coming, and we're going to throw a few things on the table that we predict for 2024. So if you're wondering about what has changed over the last 12 to 18 months, what do the experts think about this stuff, and what do we need to keep a bit of an eye out for, well, I know you're going to love this episode. So Scott's also great fun. I love bouncing off him and we certainly did a bit of that here as well. So with no further ado, I am going to hand over now to our little chat and I'm going to encourage you to sit back, relax and enjoy, have a little giggle with us. But most importantly, take some notes because Scott certainly brings to the table a few very important, very valuable points that I think are going to become very, very important as we go forward into the new year. So that's it from me. Handing over now to the amazing Scott Kramer and listen on into our chat. Well, hello there and welcome back into the Direct Selling Accelerator podcast. I am joined by a familiar face, the awesome and a devilishly handsome, as he likes me to say, Scott Kramer. Welcome on in, Scott. Hello there. How are you doing, Sam? (laughs) Ruggedly handsome. Sorry, did I get the words wrong? (laughs) Scott, it is so great to have you coming back to join us. Scott, you obviously, um, we get the the opportunity to work with you all throughout the year on lots of different projects. Uh, You run the amazing uh, Social Media Day for the Direct Selling Association of America, which has been awesome. We've loved watching you with that and what your incredible team does. And I thought it goes without saying, it's going to be great for us to catch up today to have a bit of a talk about social media in 2023, what we've seen happening and some trends and predictions for 2024. So really, this is a bit of a selfish interview though, because I get to just catch up with a friend and have a chat. That's right. We typically agree on most things, but uh, we're not afraid to disagree either, right? No, I, you know what? I, I'm really keen to see where this goes today. And, and I, I know I've got no problem with disagreeing with you on anything. And I'm sure you'll be the same with me, but we do see things in very similar ways. But I, I didn't want to pre discuss this chat too much because I wanted to kind of let this go where it was going to go and, and, and we've both come to the table with some predictions. We've both come to yeah. the table with some observations. Yeah. So this is not a very well pre-planned podcast for good reason because, you know what, let's play devil's advocate here and have some fun with this. Yeah, I agree. I love it. I mean, you and I have done, we've got to, I mean, you've been part of the last two or three social media days uh, and, and you're such a great partner. We do so many things together. We shared the stage this year. Uh, and did what I think was an incredible show. Uh, in fact, I had a dream about it last night, which is hilarious. Oh my gosh! The chat bubble. <laughs> All but right. You I and I really, really—I mean, we—we we really, I think it's because of our 
both our passion for this business and social media uh, and, and, and our strong feelings about things. So I think that's why we have so much fun together. Yeah, but I still want to know about the dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can I tell you real quick? Yeah, totally. Yeah. I think our listeners want to know now too. You've just left yeah. us hanging. But it, it was, it was, we were getting ready to speak. You were there. I think I was just going to do a presentation. We were in a park and it was the entire association. So they're literally, you know, all the usuals were there, right? Everybody, all the players. And, uh, and I had not prepared any presentation materials and I was going up. So uh, everybody was very upset with me. And I decided I was going to sit on, and, and the way I spun it was instead of, oh, I didn't prepare anything, I spun it as I was going to sit on the edge of the chair of the, of the stage, sit down, and you were going to, you were going to be there too. And I was going to say, social media is about having conversations. You're not going to see anything up on the screen because we're just going to have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, this is really funny because the the whole winging it thing, I was talking to Greg about this today. Um, he's had to, because of course I'm about to step, you know, out for a little bit to have a bit of time off with Bob and Greg is stepping in to do a lot of training. And so this week he took on five training sessions uh, that I gave him the titles for and said, here's what you should do. And so he jumped in and, you know, he had these Zooms set up. And then he said to me, I want you to sit down and, and help me formulate what I'm going to train in each of these sessions. I went, what do you need that for? Right? <laughs> he said, well, I want to know exactly what I'm going to be saying. And I said, do you know how many times you guys have given me a topic five minutes before you're telling me I'm going live right. <laughs> and I totally have to wing it on the spot? And he, he said, do you know what? I love that you and Scott do that. That <laughs> isn't how we were. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer it that way. I know that drives people nuts, but I didn't realize how much it stresses the team out. They often see you and I come in and go, let's just give, let's just go. And they're in the background going, Oh my gosh, what are they gonna the say? What's the script? Or when we get hired to, when we get hired to do these conventions, they're like, you know, yeah. could you please send us your script, you know, yes. six weeks prior? I'm like, yeah, no, that doesn't happen. <laughs> no, and the slide decks that everyone wants yeah. a week before. I'm like, guys, I'm I, I'm finishing my slide deck the day before or the day of, which means I started it three days before. I, I Don't tell right. anyone. I, right, exactly. We're not telling secrets, are we? No, I no. I reserve the right to make changes to my deck the same day <laughs> once I see the audience in the crowd. This is our internal talk, everybody. If you hear us, <laughs> you know what this means. But I did have to laugh at uh, the Direct Selling Association conference, which was in Scottsdale, Arizona this year. You and I were doing a presentation together on stage. It was great. We had so much fun together. Yeah. And I, I, I hope we can do that again because it really was, yeah, it was great fun. fun. And you and I love to bring the humor into it, which was awesome. But yeah. The thing was that we literally prepared that presentation, I'm going to say 48 hours before we did it. And the two of us were rehearsing backstage before we went up there. And of course, your amazing Angel and everybody else was panicking in the background. Angel kept ringing me going, you and Scott have to rehearse. You and Scott have to practice. You guys need to go out there and practice right now. But of course, the two of us are kind of, oh, look, a shiny new thing over shiny here, okay. someone to talk to. <laughs> And plus Thank what we you. created was was we were doing, we were on this huge long stage and we were having chat bubbles of every topic. We, yeah. Every time we spoke, a chat bubble came up. So I think one of the, you know, they had nine amazing speakers there, like world-class speakers. Yeah. They're like, you guys don't understand. One person doing that is difficult, but two people doing on the fly speaking with slides and chat bubbles behind you is one of the hardest things in the world to do, but we nailed it. It was great. We had so much fun and I'd do it again in a heartbeat. But yeah. look, today is exactly what we're just talking about, which is we're going to throw some things out there. I'm going to throw some topics out there. You're going to throw some topics out there. We're literally just going to throw our opinions and talk about what's happened this year for, for social media in general. Yeah. I think I'm going to expand this and say digital, not just social media, because we want to talk a bit about AI as well. I want to kind of incorporate some of that in here. And I said to you when we set this up, let's get a little bit maybe controversial here. I actually want to talk about some of our predictions for what's coming for next 
year and what people can look out for. And you know what? I'm not afraid to say what I think is going to happen. I think there's some big stuff that, like, actually, to be perfectly honest, I don't think I have seen as many technological changes um, probably in the last 10 years as I think we've seen in the last 12 to 18 months. I totally and that's- agree. I, I would agree with you. But I also, but what I also think it is, is, you know, the, the, the realization here is this is the internet coming into its own. Social media is just the definition of the internet being totally interactive two-way communication where yeah. television is one way. You can yell at your, your TV screen, but it doesn't talk yeah. back. You know what I mean? It's, it's so mm. really everything we're talking about right now is just the internet coming into its own. We know television took 50 years to hit critical mass, which is, you know, 50 million households or whatever. So I think we're just seeing this continued revolution or evolution of the internet becoming such an interactive platform for every type of person, business, everything is now, yeah. everything has a voice. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I know that you want to talk a bit about influencers as well today. That's a really big thing. Um, I, I kind of, I, I guess my my feeling around what's been happening over the last 12 to 18 months is there's been a really um, interesting shift uh, that, that may appear to be a backwards shift, but I think it's um, it's back to, to humanizing. I really feel like social media and, and digital in general has moved so much more towards real human contact, uh, content in the last 12 months. And I'm seeing a massive continuation of that now. Whereas we'd sort of gone down this path of creativity, editing, you know, almost like fake content, like, you know, this is my real life, but it's not really my real life. And, you know, text on images, fully edited videos, templates, all of this sort of stuff. And I'm seeing a massive shift um, back towards prioritization of raw, real, unedited content. Have you noticed that? I, I, I mean, I totally believe in it. And, and, I think all of us, I think what I've seen happen this year more than ever is, and I think it's really because of TikTok, is that we now, we we used to always treat these social networks, the Instagrams, the Facebooks, the Twitters, you know, as a way of connecting with people. Mm -hmm. And now it's just pure entertainment. It's now, you know, me watching cat memes and, and, and short videos about dogs and people dancing who I don't even know who they are, but why am yeah. I watching it 10 times over and over again, these two people dancing in their living room, uh, and I'm entertained by it versus yeah. watching something from Hollywood produced a sitcom or a television show. I think that's really the biggest, biggest shift I've seen this year is is social and, and our mobile device and our computer being such an entertainment vehicle. Yeah. It's really interesting. We went through this phase a few years ago where we had this massive disconnect from humans and, you know, we were all cut off, shut off from each other. And I, and it's really fascinating to watch behaviors now on social media and this new interest and reconnection um, with humans through these devices and through these platforms. You know, there's a really interesting piece of content I've been watching that's just been puzzling me for for probably the last three months. And I'm seeing a big trend towards this sort of thing. And it's observing people observing. Have you noticed this? So, you know, you've got TV shows like Gogglebox and things like this, but we're now doing this through social media. There's actually a couple, I don't know if you've seen this, I haven't brought this up with you before, so this is one of those on-the-fly conversations, yeah. but there's a couple that I've been watching who are in the direct selling industry. I don't know them personally, but they've popped up on my feed probably about six months ago. And it's literally a husband who will uh, creep up <laughs> to, uh, to his wife, so he'll sneak up on his wife and he will play the audio of a comedian for maybe two minutes. It's literally all he's doing is he, he, she'll be in the kitchen cooking dinner or she'll be doing something. And he's literally videoing her reaction to the, this, the comedy that, that she's listening to. So, you know, 
and and it has gone absolutely viral. So what you're doing is you're watching his beautiful wife, you know, cooking food or doing her makeup or doing the laundry or whatever it is that she's doing while you're listening to a comedian uh, for two minutes and then you're watching her reaction to what the guy is saying or, or the female is saying, whatever it is. Now, watching this, I have seen these two significantly grow their business through this real, raw, humanized content that is literally just observing her reaction to this. Um, and it has created this incredible online business for them and turned them into massive influencers. And I look at it and just wow. think, man, oh man, things have shifted and changed to what they were 18 months ago, let alone a couple That's of years crazy. ago. That's crazy. I mean, that brings it full circle to your point, which is mm. we're we're just as entertained watching real people's unedited, unhinged, truly authentic reactions. Yeah. I, I think there's a fascination behind the, like, uh, I don't know, like I, like I'm a, like I'm not supposed to be watching this or seeing this. I'm in somebody's living room watching yeah. them watch a show. I mean, Bravo has TV shows like this where they have some of yeah. the cast sit on a couch and watch a show uh, and comment. Yeah. So it's fascinating. Yeah, I think there's also this hunger for people to feel like they're not uh, less than. It, it's it's almost like people want to see other people being normal for a change because they're so used to seeing people be fake and showing you the real version of them. Yeah. But you notice that this content, and this this is a real trend, but this content that people are seeing that is so real, so raw, so relatable, so that would be me. That's how I would dress when I was doing the laundry. That's how I look when I'm making dinner. The fact that he's sneaking up on her to play these little skits and bits and pieces is him showing her in her natural environment, which I think the reason it trends is because it's real content that make people feel yeah. like, oh, it's not, she's not showing up with a filter on and she's not, you know, in her best clothes. And and so what's happened is people are naturally relating to her. Now, I watched this for a while, and this was what was really interesting. After about three months, he puts a post up. So first time he shows his face and he puts a post up. It's a video of him saying, has anyone ever wondered why my wife reacts with such grace and humor to some of these very offensive skits? And he's always able to laugh. And he said, I truly believe it's because she's eating well and she's healthy and da da da. And he went down this road and he said, you know, and, and he had a little hook on there at the end. So, you know, essentially if people wanted to chat with him a bit more, about something or other they could reach out now i watched that post go absolutely viral i thought it's so clever building that real relatable raw connective content that's not edited it's not played with and then using that to build the relationship and then create curiosity intrigue is just so powerful now i'm gonna i'm gonna counterpoint this okay um because the one thing that kind of annoys me is is I, I have a friend who is a huge influencer. She is also an ex, you know, reality star and whatnot. And and now all she does is I'm trying to find something here on my desk. Uh, I'll just use this cup. You know, now all she does is is do these Instagrams. I hope I'm not giving much away because she watches. Oh, she hopefully she's not going to see this. I maybe she will. She watches us. Um, you know, and, and 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 now it's 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 all like the. I'm drinking out of this glass. Mm -hmm. You can get this glass. I'm going to put the link in my bio. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this glass is great. Mm. Yeah. Gosh, I love this glass. Now I'm going to go put my glass down and pick up something else. I, 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 I kind of despise that form of influencer. Yeah, um, I agree. Uh, I, I just, I just, I, I don't think we need people out there hawking things because they're going to get a commission. Uh, because they have a big audience because they did something funny or whatnot. Yeah. And, and I, I, I want to, I want to see this get to a place where it's not everybody's trying to become famous. One yeah. trend, I think, I mean, not to dive in too quickly on our trends here, but is really the rise of the nano or micro influencer. It's mm -hmm. not about having 300,000 followers. It's about, uh, it's about relating and being real and authentic to your 10 followers, 
your hundred yeah. followers, your thousand followers. It's not about the quantity. It's not about trying to be a Kardashian. It's about having some influence to bring something special to even your smallest little circle. I, I, yeah. That's what I believe. Yeah, I think it's a slippery slope and I completely agree with you. Um, and, you know, it's almost that uh, concept that people say, hey, I'm going to gain the followers and then I'm going to take them off on this tangent that they didn't agree to go on. Yeah. Almost like uh, like what you said, you know, I'm going to get, I'm going to suck them in and then I'm going to use their attention for something that they didn't agree to give it to. And then people and, are going to get, companies are going to give me things and I'm going to unbox yeah. them and then I'm going to try to hawk them to these people and and I just that part of it is is the ugly side of influencer that I don't yeah. appreciate. That's why I believe in the power of the micro influencer that isn't trying to get a cut, but mm. is simply trying to. A lot of the people that, that work with us, they're 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 yeah. they're selling their their business, they're doing their side hustle, they're doing their gig, and they're trying to bring value to somebody's life. I think we're gonna really, really be pushing authenticity more and more and more and more. Even mm. in a world of AI, authenticity is gonna be key. Yeah. Um, I want to. I actually this this. Uh, I want to talk about one of my other pet peeves that I'm seeing trending at the moment. It's yeah. come up this year. I've seen it a lot. I can. I'm seeing it happening more. And I think it's. I I believe this is why we've seen a big shift in links. And I think that there's going to be an even greater shift towards social media cracking down on this. Um, and and I don't know about you, but this is where you get the particularly. This is with short form video. So they give you the hook. And then they tell you to find out the rest of it by clicking on the link below. Have you seen this coming up? Like clickbaiting. Where the, it's, it's clickbaiting, but but it's not false clickbaiting. Well, it is. Well, it's. It, I think it depends. It, sometimes it is. I think what it is, though, is people, um, I don't ever click, by the way, because it just annoys the heck out of me. But, you know, where they say something like um, the thing that changed my life and then you watch the video thinking the video is going to give you the thing that changed their life, but then they get to the end of the video and say, if you want to find out what it is, you have to click down below. Yeah. And then they've got to click and it takes them to some kind of a sales page or a sign up or a webinar or whatever it is. Um, and I'm seeing this happening more and more. I reckon now if I go through reels, probably every third reel is something like this. Have you noticed this yeah, trend? It's, it, I feel it is kind of clickbaity. It is kind of a, it, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's this, I don't know, this sense of everybody builds funnels now and, and they, mm -hmm. they drive you in to do this, to then try to do this and try to, I feel like. I feel like so many times I get, I see how easy it is for people to fall for things Yeah. versus again, authenticity and just straightforward. I, 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 I get it all the time and I, and I do click and I do sometimes regret that I clicked and I, mm -hmm. it's probably why I have, you know, I don't know, 280 A million emails. red emails, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, to me, and, and this is where I think we've got to be very careful. To me, it's treating people with disrespect as though they're silly and they're not, you know, I, I, just, I just don't think it's treating people with this understanding that you know what I'm doing. Like, in a way, I think we need to start treating people as clever human beings that we're equal to with respect. In other words, tell people what they're going to be clicking on and give them the choice to do it. You can still be clever about it, but you don't need to trick them into doing it. And this is where I think social media is getting really frustrated with our industry because we're seeing so much of this now. Yeah. Um, and, you know, this is where I want to talk about one of the biggest changes we saw in 2023 actually came in at the end of 2022, which was Facebook finally cracked down and said, we're sick of links. We're sick of people posting links that take people away from the platform for two reasons. Number one, because we don't want people to leave our platform. 
obvious one. Second one is people don't want their pattern interrupted in that way either. If they're cruising Facebook, they actually, for the most part, don't want to be whisked away to some sales page somewhere or someone's website or online store without realizing that they're doing it. And so uh, last year, Facebook said, and Instagram, so Meta said, look, you know what? we're going to crack down on this. And they reduced the reach of any post containing a link uh, by up to, I think it's it was a bit over 63% across business pages and personal profiles. But then they said, we know that people think they're getting away with this inside of Facebook groups. So we're going to make this even harder in groups. And they reduced the reach of a post containing a link within a Facebook group to 93%, meaning that I think it's like, 0.06% of the people inside of your group may be delivered your post if it contains a link because Facebook just doesn't want people t- taken away from the platform anymore. And I still don't think people have got the hang of this. I don't know what you're observing here. Well, I mean, I, I have a very I have a, a very personal like passion around this response, which is, as you know, I, I, I'm the chief brand and CEO of Multibrain. We have a platform that powers, I think, something like over 650,000 people, mainly in the direct selling industry from various different companies. And and I deal with all day long of when I post to my groups, nobody sees it anymore. It's because of you. Like, yeah. It's not because <laughs> Let's it's what we're the tool. with Meta. They love us. We've got three certifications where, I mean, it, it, you know, they, they, they live yeah. off of us. They love, we're open. Like that, that's part of our agreement together. Uh, no, it's because of what you're posting. And it's been, and it's not mm. only because you're posting a link, but then you're posting a link to 20 different groups within a one minute period. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, this idea of the spammy behavior, I think that's, that's, as Sam, it's a fight we're going to be fighting for, you know, for forever, just because I think yeah. people are our people are used to thinking of social as if I throw it up against the wall, I'm going to wake up and see a bunch of sales. Yeah, and I, I'm going to like add to that as well, Scott. I think um, there's also this, you know, same concept that you know we hear this a lot. People will contact us and say, "Hey, is, can you tell us there's been a big shift with the algorithm because our posts are suddenly getting a lot less reach and interaction than what they were getting?" And clearly, it's the platform, not me, because I'm doing the same thing I was doing um, before that might have been working or getting a different response, or perhaps their attitude is I'm just showing up more and I should be therefore getting seen more. And the the bottom line is, guys, that these platforms are adapting all of the time, but what they're adapting to is you. They're adapting to the audience. And when you see a shift in your reach, in your engagement, in your response, you need to stop for a moment and think to yourself, what is Facebook or what is Meta teaching me about my content right now? Because their priority is to deliver the best content to the right people. So if you're not reaching people with your stuff, there's something you need to change. It's not because the platform changed for the worst and it, it's not about liking it. It's about understanding that the platform knows your audience so well that it knows what they want to see. And if it suddenly decides, hey, we're not going to deliver this piece of content anymore, it's because they've recognized that piece of content doesn't work for that particular group of people. Therefore, you need to make some adjustments. I want to add that because I think this is, this is one of my big keynote topics moving into 2024, Mm -hmm. which is instead of blaming the algorithm, make the algorithm your best friend. Yeah. I a hundred percent agree with that. How we've not disagreed yet. So no, well, no, let, I'm, (laughs) I'll work on it. (laughs) Like you're totally off. You're you're out of line. This is not what this was supposed to be for. We're supposed to get it. (laughs) I really think it's about it. I've started, I mean, you and I've seen this in training and what we've been, you know, some of the shows I do is, is make the algorithm work for you. How are you going to do that? Well, you're going to create content that people engage with, that people like, and guess what? The other biggest news of 2023, tell me if you agree with this. At the end of 2022, Zuckerberg said, you're going to see 15% of your content coming from people you don't know called suggested content. In 2023, yeah. it could be up to 30%. I yeah. argue it's 50%. Between yeah. suggested and, and sponsored, that's yeah. half my newsfeed is content of people I don't know. 
Yeah. So, so you uh, you read my mind. <laughs> well, you've gone from agreeing well, no, no, to no, no, reading each other's mind. We can't read. Each, we can't finish each other's sentences. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about unconnected distribution next, which is the suggested content. Yeah. And you know, to what you were saying, Scott, Mark Zuckerberg made the announcement late last year that, hey, you know what, you're no longer going to only see content just from people that you follow. We're now also going to start showing you content that we suggest you might be interested in based on what we know about you. And you know, Greg often says that Facebook knows you better than you know yourself to the point where it can predict your behavior next. And this is, you know, this is where people say, oh, Facebook's listening. Do you know what? I think that's still kind of up in the air. We could talk about that in a sec because I feel like that's a really controversial topic right there. But I actually think it's more about prediction than listening. I think it's that Facebook knows what you're going to do next. It knows your next move better than you do. And it's using that to decide what to show you. But it's also giving us now this unconnected distribution, which you and I spoke about on stage last year at the Direct Selling Association conference, which was it's both a good thing and a bad thing because if you've got your content right and you're delivering great content that people want to see, you've now got the opportunity because Mark Zuckerberg did say that by the end of 2023, 35% of everything that you see will now be suggested content from people you've never met, never seen, never connected with before. Yeah. This means Facebook is constantly pushing out content to try and gain new followers, make new connections, so it's saying, hey, you know what? You don't even need to have these people as followers for free. We're going to show your stuff to people when you get it right. Make the but there's a bad side. Friend. That's right. That's using the algorithm to your advantage, just as you were saying. But the bad side to that is if you have not figured out how to deliver good content to your audience yet, you're going to see even less people because now you're no longer guaranteed to reach people you're connected with. Facebook saying, well, we're taking away another 35% of potential reach because we're now going to fill that with content in people's feeds from people they've never met. Yeah. So it's like to what you were saying, I think working with that algorithm has never been more important prior as to what it is right now. And I agree with you. I think unconnected distribution, this suggested content, is only going to continue to increase for sure over the next 12 months. I actually am really excited about it. I, I mean, you, Sam, you know that I come from, you know, 20 years of entertainment experience. So I, I, I really, I, I see that uh, I, it's, it's one of my favorite quotes quotes is, you know, all of us now need to never think of ourselves as consumers of content. We are all now producers of content. Everybody yeah. is a creator. Everybody is a producer. And so now, you know, when you've got this universe of millions of producers and micro influencers and all of this stuff, you've got an algorithm that says, oh, wait, 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 show that one to that person, show that one to that person, show that one to that person. So instead of going, oh, I hate this. If you click enter, press, delete, did this, you'll see a whole new feed, which is a crock, yeah. you know, these smoky Don't. things. Um, but if you that's clickbait right there. Uh, yeah. If you accept <laughs> yeah. this and say, how do I create content to not only bring value to somebody? I mean, mm -hmm. I, I just feel like I feel like I'm so comfortable in my skin with my business and what we do and what I get to do with you. I, I feel like it's like who needs a script? Who needs a? I mean, this is just pure passion, knowledge, wisdom, experience. I feel so strong about where everything's going that we can yeah. really help people. I, I don't know. I just feel really good about where it's all going. I think it's such a great thing for those people who feel like, oh, I've got to be more like that person, less like me. I have to be able to edit. I have to know how to do this. I, know, yeah. I have to know how to use yeah. the technology. I need to be better on camera. None of that is true anymore. In fact, the more authentic and real you can be, and literally if you can just hit play, hit record, hit go, hit post, you know, the people that have got the guts to hit that button are the ones that are going to get the reach, not the ones that know how to do all the cool editing and use all the tools. And right. I really think a lot of tools are going to be made more redundant as we go forward. Um, because really what the platforms are looking for, because what the people are looking for, which is you is stuff that is just raw, real, completely relatable. I think that unedited stuff um, is is just going to, it's already skyrocketed. And that's why I think these short form videos have gone so well. Um, and of course, live content goes so well. 
is for that reason. I want, um, I, I literally, I, there's, I mean, there's, there's, I, there's a handful of these. I watched this yeah. father and his two kids do dance routines. I, I think they're, you know, I, I, it's not about how many people they have and how much, if they're making money and all that stuff. What, what, yeah. I, what it's about is they're entertaining me and I don't know them. Yeah. And it's not like I'm watching friends. It's I'm watching, Oh, there they are doing another little 15 second dance routine. And I'm going to watch but it. It is like times. watching friends because over time you start to feel like, you know, these people because yeah. you keep seeing them appearing. It's the most bizarre connection that we're seeing. I love it. I, because it, it basically the playing field has been leveled. Yeah. Okay. You and I have as great an opportunity to reach somebody as NBC, CBS, CNN, Fox, whatever it is. So our entertainment. There's somebody that will watch what we're doing over watching that. So yeah. it's a level playing field. Everybody has an audience and it just comes down to the content and what you produce and what you put out there. And does it bring yeah. value? Yeah. And I think that's the thing. Does it bring value? And is it interesting to the end user? And that's what it all comes back to. Yeah. What do they care about? What's important to them? What entertains them? And really that's what the platform was created for in the first place was entertainment and connection, right? We're going back to the roots of what Facebook was for. Yeah. Um, I, I want to um, just really that. quickly, it, well, I want to talk about something that I think a couple of things that I think will fall into the trends bucket, but kind of came in this year okay. first. Can we, and then we're going to go with the, the, I guess the, the new things that I think we're going to see. But the thing I want to talk about is verified accounts for a little moment, because we saw this shift this year where Facebook started to say, Hey, if you want your account to be verified and it started with personal accounts, you had to pay a monthly membership fee. Now, in the last month, I'm going to say we saw an introduction of business pages where it said, hey, if you want your business page to be verified and you wanted to have human help, if something goes wrong, you've got to pay a monthly fee for your business account as well. Scott, I really want to know what your thoughts are with this. Do you think that this is going to keep going for 2024? Do you think this is going to flop? Where do you think it's at? Because I know that you were very opinionated about this when it came out. You and I did a uh, as a, a webinar on this uh, for one of your groups. And um, it, it's very controversial topic because it's this concept that people have been waiting for for a long time going, when's Facebook going to make people pay to use its platform? And I think it's a, it's a step in that direction. It's a slippery slope. Um, you know, I, I know that for me, I got really excited when I earned my stripes, right? I got my mm. verification. That means I must be somebody. I must be an influencer. Oh my gosh, I've got a blue check mark. So the part that that is this aspiration or this, I can go pay 10 bucks and look like I'm a celebrity on social media BS. Yeah. That's what I got a problem with. Mm, I'm okay. really mixed these days because I have a, a friend who was at a, 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 at a company and he's head of their marketing and whatnot, and he got hacked. And, and, he, and it was his Facebook account that got hacked. And, and I literally said, go through Instagram, go get verified, pay for the verification because you got to attach it to a Facebook account anyway, get the human support. And by gosh, if it didn't help him and he got it back. So yeah, right. I argue so it's that it, it worked in that case. Now I've heard horror yeah. stories that you know, there is really no, there's not major human. It's not as human as you think, but mm. I don't know. I've got very mixed feelings on it. If you're a brand, if you're a Tupperware, if you're an Avon, if you're a Mary Kay, if you're a Rodan, if you're one of those, absolutely go pay 12 bucks in case somebody's going to hack your account or they're going to uh, try to rip off and do other things and do, uh, do imposter accounts yeah. protect yourself if you're a major brand? If you're a if you're a representative of one of these companies, I would not worry about somebody impersonating you. I don't know. I, I just I don't ever like to push advertising. I don't ever yeah. like to push paying for anything except for just being your authentic self and doing good content. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm I'm not gonna disagree with you, but I want to just throw out a. I guess a different a, a different thought yeah. process here and that is that we are seeing a huge amount of people who are just everyday people not big brands um 
getting impersonated and having duplicate accounts of them created or getting hacked and then not being able to get the support that they need. My question is, because I I did sign up to this, I did do the verified for my personal profile. Now, where I get frustrated is the reason that I did that was because I was thinking about my business page and my groups. And I thought if I can protect my personal profile, then I'm subsequently going to be protecting my business page and my groups. But then lo and behold, a few months later, Facebook comes forward and says, if you want to protect your business page, you need to pay to verify your business page. And that's going to be, I think it was, what did we work out? 27 or 29 US dollars a month? I feel like it's already flopped. I haven't heard anything more about it, honestly. Well, it came up as a suggestion for me maybe two weeks ago and I didn't opt for it because I got very frustrated and I thought I've already opted to pay for that for my personal profile to cover my business page. Now you're saying I've got to pay for that for my business page as well. So what I'm, what I'm a little bit, um, I I guess for me, uh, it makes sense to protect your personal profile, to protect the other um, assets you have attached to that, to have a verified account if, in fact, the human element of support is a real thing. But I've had this now for probably six months, maybe longer, no, probably longer because I think I signed up for it before we were over there with you last. So it would have to be around 10, 11 months ago now. And I don't I have not seen any change, any shift, and I haven't needed to use the human support yet. So I actually don't know if I'm getting what I'm paying for until a problem arises, at which point, you know, was it worth it? I don't know. I I mean, it sounds like you're almost as wishy-washy as I am on this, like agree, disagree, agree, disagree. Um, You know, if, if, if social media, if your Facebook account is really important to your business, uh, I have some clients that that are personal brands and, and they sell a lot on lives and things like that. If it's really that important to your business, I would do it. Um, what I worry about is people thinking, you know, the, the, the masses thinking they've got to pay uh, to play. And that's just not true. Yeah. You don't have to. And if yeah. you're doing it for uh, egotistical reasons of like the reason I got excited, my star got there, but I'm not an egomaniac, I promise. Yeah. And, uh, but, but, you know, that kind of that, 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 the, the prestige of having a check mark, oh, it's, this, yeah. that's a crock. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't do it for that. It means nothing. It's, yeah. it really, it really doesn't mean anything, does it? Um, let's talk about AI. Okay. Chat GPT. I'm, um, I'm obsessed. You're obsessed. Well, I think there's, there's good and bad to this. This year we saw a huge shift in this space. This is the biggest shift I think we've seen is the rise of artificial intelligence and it being used for, I believe, potentially more than it should be. I'm going to throw it out there. I think it's been, um, it's both an incredible tool but it's also being uh, misunderstood and misused as well. So I want to I want to talk about that for a bit because I think from a trend perspective, you and I have both got some predictions around what's going to happen with this going forward into 2024, but also some observations of what's happened this year. And, you know, I think AI for me watching it this year, I have seen a lot of people become quite lazy with their content. Have you noticed the same thing? I don't know about you. Well, yes, of course. Uh, but, but you don't have to agree with me. <laughs> I, I, don't know if, I don't know if it's lazy about their content, but have I noticed more and more people are just that their prose is almost Shakespearean? Yeah. Um, yes. you know I mean? Like How I can't even touch write? my team. I have Ian on our team who does our emails and does all this stuff. And all of a sudden I read yeah. this email and I went, dude, that is so chat GPT. You need to like, <laughs> take that fluff out of here. Okay. You, you overboard. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I think yeah. I think I team think this- meetings have taken on a whole new. Oh when you when you, I love how you throw an idea out now because you and I love to come up with new ideas and I, and it used to be I'd throw an idea out and everyone would kind of have to sort of mull over it for ages and now I've got half the team while we're on a call will start to throw all of these um you know headers out there and and content ideas out there as soon as I give them the idea suddenly they're going oh we could call it this and then we could put this in there and I'm like you you're on Chat GPT right <laughs> now are you. <laughs> We need we need four topics. We need we need to come up with some ideas for November's training and lessons. Whatever. He's sixty right now. You know, it's like, <laughs> it is amazing. I love AI. AI is is going to be the the monster of twenty twenty four as we all figure out how to use it, yeah. and how to integrate it into our lives. 
you know, at Multibrain, we're doing it very carefully. We're not saying yep. click and create a post for me uh, yeah. because I think that's inauthentic. But if you type something and you're a bad writer like I am, you can say, can you make that funny for me? And I think of yeah. AI almost as my assistant. One of the funny things yeah. I do with AI is I treat AI like a human being. So I'll, I'll go to chat GPT and I'll say, hi, could you, uh, hi, chat. I, I pretend like his name's chat. It's a he. <laughs> um, yeah. Can you help me do something, please? Here's what I want it. Like I literally talk to it and it's about, it's about coaching. AI is about coaching. Yeah. It's not do the work for me, push a button. And that's what I'm afraid most people are going to do. And they're going to realize yeah. it's going to hurt them. But if you yeah. truly can coach it and use it and prompt it and get it to what you can, you can, you can, you can add so much realm to whatever you're trying mm. to do, to a campaign, to an idea, to a concept. I think it's amazing. I think what people have to be very aware of here, and this is, I'm going to be spoiling this for a lot of people who have been using chat GPT for their content. If you're using it for your content, you're literally going into any, any, any AI, but let's say you're going into chat GPT and you're saying, give me 10 posts to create for Facebook on this topic and it's it's doing it and you're copy pasting and you're putting it in there, you need to understand that Facebook, actually all of the platforms have got recognition software that knows when it originated from from any kind of AI, including ChatGPT. So um, from that point, what it's actually doing is deprioritizing content that it knows you didn't write. Yeah. Now that doesn't mean that you didn't that you didn't use chat GPT to tweak it. That's okay. But I was talking to my kids about this the other day, Scott, because I was like, oh, is that really true? Originally when I heard it, and this was actually at Social Media Marketing World in March in San Diego, this came up. They said there's this software behind the background that actually recognizes AI and it says this was written by AI, not a human, and it's going to get less reach. Yep. Now in my head I'm going, yeah, right, like whatever, as if it, as if it really knows that. That's just a threat they make. My kids have explained to me that this is actually real software because uh, the schools have had to implement it because what happens is the kids will get given an essay they have to write or some kind of a project they've got to create and they can go into chat GPT, say, write me the essay and, of course, bang, 30 seconds later their whole essay is done and they go off and play football. So um, now when they submit any work, it gets submitted first to a software program that actually checks all of these platforms to because they keep a memory of what they create. ChatGPT is always learning. So it knows if it wrote something. So if you go to ChatGPT and you say, did you write this? It will say yes or no. And so these software programs are actually able to recognize this was written by AI or this was written by a human because it, they keep records of it. They know. So I, think the trend, I think the trend is, I, I, I'm going to call it hybrid content. Yeah, I like And that. hybrid content is, is the fusion of artificial AI intelligence and human creativity. So yeah. it's again, of, of, of you know, doing your content the way, one of two ways creating the content you want and then using AI to refine it or yeah. using AI and then the human touch to personalize it. I think it's yeah. going to be a joint partnership uh, that's going to allow us to do more quicker, more efficiently, but the mm. human touch is never going away. The authenticity is going to be key to anyone's success using AI. Yeah, 100%. I'm I'm just in the back of my mind I see um AI as the 10% uh of it's like that that last 10% or the first 10%, but it's it's like you need to have 90% of you in there and then that yeah. let's finesse it, let's take it to the oh, next exactly. level or let's come up with the idea using the AI and then humanize it after that. Yeah. Yep. And I love how you've incorporated this actually into your platform, Multibrain, because what you've done is instead of um, saying, you know, here is content made for you, you have to write the caption, like you said, or and then ask the artificial intelligence to finesse that caption yeah. in whichever way. So make this sound funnier or make it sound smarter or make it sound whatever, less salesy, I think is one of the options you've got yeah. in there. 
Um, and then the other thing is um, suggest some hashtags and it's doing the same thing. It's picking up on the text and going here are the hashtags that are trending that you could use. Yeah. So I think they're really clever uses of artificial intelligence. I think where I'm seeing people going really wrong is they're going, oh, this can save me so much time, which it can. But to use it without adding you in, I think is a big mistake. And that's where I really caution our listeners to, you know, people are teaching you to do this at the moment, by the way. A lot of people are saying, hey, just go in, save all your time, get ChatGPT to create all your content for you. But what you and I know, Scott, is the algorithm is picking up on that on the platforms and yeah. it's actually going to penalize you for it. So don't yeah, do it. I mean, we always look at opportunities to automate and I think automation is key and automation, you know, you can schedule and all that stuff. But but the human, the human factor is always going to be the key factor here. Yeah. Yeah. hundred well, percent. Let's do some speed round. All right. I throw some stuff let's at me. It. I've, I, I want to. Okay. This is going to be a speed round before we wrap things up. Uh, how about I throw out a trend? You agree, disagree. All right. Go for it. And you can do it better. Um, video, video content in 2024. What am I well, I think video content that like I can't disagree agree with that. <laughs> video content is is I think it's going to continue trending, um, but I I think we're going to see a shift uh, with live content this year. More live. Well, okay, ephemeral. Short content. form live. Short form live. I think short form live is going to become. Uh, I think there's going to be a push towards more short form live. Ephemeral content, that content that disappears in 24 hours. FOMO content, I call it. Yeah. This is a this is an interesting one. This is this is like the story content that we've, you know, I think potentially um I think I think it could be something that gets tested with reels. Um, so that, you know, there'll be content that is like a mishmash between stories and reels, I think would be a very uh possible um, introduction into social media okay. over the next year. My, um, I, 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 I think uh, there, there's some new platforms that we saw some big shifts with. Okay. I want to know where do you think Threads and X, which is the old Twitter, are going to be in 2024? Uh, you know, I, I just coming from a, a I was coming from so many years in television. I watched television go from big networks to cable to now streaming to you know from four channels to five hundred channels to five thousand channels. Mm -hmm. uh, I think every time we see a new social network come in, <clears throat> and the initial reaction is it's a Facebook killer. Facebook's never going away. It's not going to disappear. <laughs> it's not the next MySpace. Yeah. Um, you know, it's too integrated into our lives. I think when you see these new social networks come out, I think it's an opportunity to to pick a lane and a vertical, like a social mm. network just for real estate or a social network just for this or this. Uh, I think that's where you're going to see new social networks come out. I don't know how I feel about threads. It was so easy to sign up because Facebook and Meta kind of made me do it. Yeah. Have I written one? No. Um you know, Twitter, I just kind of, it's funny. I get my notifications from X every morning and I read about five or six stories. Do I post? I, no. So I, I can only talk for my personal behavior. You're doing more than I am now. I'm, I used I to like, use Twitter and I barely use it anymore. Look, I, I, you know, with what I do, I think I just, because I started on Facebook back in 2008, you know, when it began and I, I yeah. wrote something about it's snowing in Montana and I've got snow outside and deer yeah. out my door. If I post it to Instagram, great. I love Instagram. It's my favorite social network. But all my action and my audience and my fans and my friends and my yeah. connections and my followers and, and the people I follow and respect, they're all on Facebook. I post one yeah. picture of a deer. I get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. So for me, Facebook still remains uh, so valuable uh, because of, of the community that we've built there together. Um, mm. you know, going and finding that and building that on TikTok, I, I don't know. I, I just, I think they're going to come. I think they're going to be micro networks. I think they're going to be more about set audiences. Yeah, I, I agree with you, but I'm going to throw a, a prediction out there. Okay. And, and I haven't spoken to you about this, so I'll be interested to see what you think. I actually think Facebook 
we've seen Facebook integrate the the best parts of TikTok. We've seen Facebook integrate the best parts of Instagram. And what I see Facebook do, it's kind of like it just grabs bits and it goes, we're going to add all these bits in to make our platform like the the mega platform that kind of it, it's it's like the you know the greatest show bag on earth where it's got like a bit of everything from everywhere yeah, um i i actually think facebook will incorporate bits of twitter which is threads because as a, you know just for those that don't know what threads is it's facebook's or meta's Twitter. So Facebook's got this philosophy. If you can't beat them, join them. What they, they either buy the platform or they recreate the platform. So you saw TikTok came up. It, it was on the rise. Facebook went, how do we create our own version of this? And so you saw reels got introduced to Instagram and then Facebook. Um, so what I think we're probably going to see are some of those features that people love over on threads or Twitter. I don't think threads is going to, um, to, to grow. I, I think it, I wouldn't be surprised if it flopped before the end of 2024. However, I think they're going to incorporate some parts of threads into Facebook. And um, I would, I would say as well, be real, be real is another one that I've been watching and, um, I'm not seeing that one. I don't, have you used be real Scott? No. Right. So our kids and us jumped onto it very, very early on. And be real essentially is where it sends you a reminder and it says time to be real and it could happen at any time of the day. And the moment that it comes up, you have to take a photo of what you're doing and it uses the front and the back camera of your phone so you can see you and where you are. Uh, You cannot edit. You have to do it in the moment and you can't see what anyone else that you're connected with has posted until you've posted. So it hides uh, and it holds ransom the content you want to see from everybody else until you've submitted yours. Um, and the whole concept of it is this real human content. Now, the, the problem with this is that it requires people to be constantly using social media. So it naturally trends towards the teens. Uh, however, um, there is no way at this point that I can see that it can be monetized. So, um, you know, from a business perspective, it doesn't at this point um, seem to have a huge benefit and I'm sure that will change, but I've got a feeling Facebook's going to incorporate over the next 12 to 18 months elements of this be real style content, stop what you're doing, take a photo right now. I reckon we'll see something come up. I don't know. Um, I'm going to look into it. I mean, it seems, it seems very kitschy, gamey, funny. Yep. Uh, fun to do. And as we know, Young always loves to adopt new technologies uh, yep. where 50% of the technology curve is is the masses. So we're still like, yep. just learning Facebook. Um, yeah, Facebook always just either buys it or creates it themselves. You know, they've got yep. the 2.8 billion people. Um, yeah. Again, I think we're going to keep seeing them. And I want to see them. We want to see stuff. I mean, AI is going to be probably the biggest adjuster of of networks that can can – you know, I, one of my favorite movies that I think was so underplayed is Ready Player One, and I mean, I think that, oh yes, I just think that's yep. where we're going, where we, we where we can go into this these virtual realities and play and do these different things. I mean, that's you know that's exciting to me. That type of artificial intelligence, virtual yep. reality, all of that. But for for our audience growing their business, I still think. Instagram is a great place to share and entertain. Facebook is a great place to connect. Connect, yeah, 100%. Right. Um, Scott, I want to throw it out there. Uh, social search, artificial intelligence, what do you think is coming with that? How do you think that's all going to play a part? Social already is. In- it, so, social it, social is, is surpassing search as a way for people to find businesses. So, mm-hmm. so keywords are more important than hashtags because – Everything is searchable now. People go to Facebook or go to Instagram to search for products, like to go learn more about them. So yep. the brands that personify, and thankfully in direct selling, it's you're personified because your entire sales force is a person, um, is, is huge. So search mm. is just, you got to understand your Facebook account is searchable. People can find you. Yep. So the better your content is, people will find you. Yeah. 
I think Facebook is probably going to, in its competition to beat Google, uh, and we've just seen uh, Meta AI has just been introduced. I think we're going to see um, Facebook literally becoming a new version of Google over the next 12 yeah, months. I think social is, is where people serve. It's where people go now to find where they're. Again, what, just to bring this full circle to the beginning of our call and our talk today is, is all of this is just the internet truly coming into its true identity of what it can yeah. do that other mediums can't, that print, radio, television, you know, the internet interactive is just really proving why it's so powerful in its ability to yeah. connect. So, yeah, absolutely. Have you got any more on your list? I'm done. I've got one more, okay, just one, one more. more. And I I can't wait to hear what you got to say about this because okay. you and I were both so unsure about this when this got announced a few months ago. Sure. Multiple personal profiles. Where do you think that's going? Uh, you know, I, I have a very strong <laughs> feeling about multiple personal profiles is just the reality of Facebook trying to find new ways yeah. to do targeted advertising to make revenue. So I think it's yeah. stupid. I think it's ridiculous. I think it's confusing. Uh, I yeah. think it'll flop. Uh, I don't recommend it. Anybody do it. Uh, if, if I want Who's got to the time, I seriously, I, I, I don't just, need I, a separate personality for the fact that I like to watch food. Yeah. <laughs> or that you have a dog. Or that I have um, a dog, right. Yeah. I, look, I agree. I think it's going to flop. I don't think it's going to okay. take off at all. So and uh, to get more ad revenue. Imagine fi having five Scots to target. No, yeah. Stupid. <laughs> um, so look, this has been great fun. Thank you so much, Scott, for jumping yeah, in and, and joining me today. Night. Um, I, I really wish that we had, um, you know, argued a little bit more, but you know, naturally that, yeah. uh, that never happens. So, uh, I, look, it's been great. I'm, I'm just so glad that you, you know, you understand and accept everything I say as, 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 as the best. So I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. It's been so great chatting with you. And again, thanks to everybody for listening in. Uh, it's going to be an exciting year, I think. So um, watch this space. And I think there's lots of really exciting stuff coming. So, um, yeah. you know, let's, you know, make sure that you continue to tune in to the podcast for more updates as they come and how to use those updates uh, to your advantage. I love what you said, Scott, about treating the algorithm as your best friend friend. And I really, I kind of want to finish on that and remind people, you know, this is not something to be frustrated by. It's something to learn from. Uh, it is a very, very clever tool and it will help you if you can align with it. So for sure. For sure. yeah. Well, thanks, thanks for again, everybody. Me. So great seeing you again, Scott. Thank you. Thanks everybody. And uh, we'll see you again next week. Bye for now. Take care. Thank you for joining us in this episode of the Direct Selling Accelerator podcast. If you love listening and you found that this was helpful for your direct selling business, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also check out the recommended video that's popped up on your screen right here. I look forward to seeing you again next time. Bye for now.